Animal Crossing New Horizons is full of new features and additions, all the way from crafting your favorite DIY to taking a deep dive in your swimming suit for some sea creatures. Whether this is your first time playing Animal Crossing New Horizons, or you've been in debt to Tom Nook for years, I've gathered together all of the best tips and compiled them into one guide, and you'll want to watch all the way through so you don't miss a single one. When you first start the game, you'll quickly realize that you have nothing except for your starter clothes. On the second day, talk to Tom Nook and attend his DIY workshop. This will unlock the bug net and the fishing rod. Then you can start donating bugs and fish to Tom Nook, and he'll soon unlock the flimsy axe by doing so. And once you've done a total of 5 bugs and fish, he'll give you Blathers' tent. So take the tent and place it down, and Blathers will be there the next day. Once he's there, go talk to him and he'll unlock the vaulting pole and the shovel. And then a little bit later in the game, Tom Nook will want to expand the island residence and will give you three housing plots with a bunch of DIY recipes. And at this point, he'll give you the DIY recipe for the ladder. When you're crafting items, double tap the A button to speed up the crafting animation. And after you've done a few, you'll definitely thank me for this tip. A quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Bravo Studio, and their Animal Crossing Nintendo Switch accessories. Bravo Studio has a ton of great Animal Crossing themed products for your Nintendo Switch, including carrying cases and tote bags, and they're all made with high quality materials. They sent me one of their carrying cases and the quality and functionality is spot on. It's by far the best Animal Crossing Switch accessories for the money, and has a ton of 5 star customer reviews. Click the link below that will automatically add a 10% discount to your Amazon cart and get yourself hooked up with this sweet deal. But you need to hurry because this 10% discount is only valid for the next month. You'll soon start to realize that you need a way to make more bells, and in the early stages of the game, you can pick the weeds and sell them to Timmy and Tommy for a small profit. In addition to the weeds, you can sell the fruit, the seashells, and all other resources for bells. However, selling the crafted items will get you a lot more bells, so take some of the weeds and the fruit and the seashells and craft items and sell them. You'll make a whole lot more profit this way. Every day, you should search for the rocks on your island. When you hit them, you'll notice that you get different resources from them such as rocks, clay, and iron. However, there will be one rock every day that gives you nothing but bells. So be on the lookout for this rock every day for some easy bells. Also, you'll find a glowing spot on the ground every day. Once you get the shovel, you can dig up the spot and you'll find 1,000 bells buried. If you bury the bells back in the hole, it will grow a tree that produces 3,000 bells. However, if you bury larger amounts, such as 10,000 bells, then the tree will produce a total of 30,000 bells. Now there's a lot to talk about with money trees, and I've actually created another video for that, so I'll put the link in the description so you can check it out after this video. Eventually, you'll be able to buy a swimsuit from Timmy and Tommy in the Nook's Cranny Shop, or from the Resident Service Terminal, once you do, put on the swimsuit and go diving for sea creatures. The sea creatures sell for more bells in general than the bugs and fish. And this segues into the next topic, which is bugs and fish. Eventually as you progress through the game, you'll start to notice more and more visitors on your island. You'll start to see a red lizard known as Flick, and a beaver known as CJ, and a red otter known as Pascal. You can sell your bugs to Flick, and sell your fish to CJ, and then trade various sea items to Pascal for various DIY recipes. But selling your bugs and fish to Flick and CJ will get you a lot more bells compared to selling them to Timmy and Tommy. The bugs and the fish do spawn at different times of the day, and they will also spawn in certain conditions, such as only on a tree stump for some bugs, and for some fish only in ponds. So if you're trying to fill your museum, then you'll want to do some more research here and find out more about when each spawn and where they spawn. If you're having trouble catching the fish, you can actually listen for the sounds to catch the fish. If you listen closely, there will be a distinct sound that you can listen for when it's time to press the A button to catch the fish. If you're hunting for fish, you can actually make fish bait by digging up the manila clams that you find on the beach. And once you dig up the first manila clam, you'll be given the DIY recipe, and you can find it by looking in your DIY recipes app on your Nook phone. Now another tip if you're looking to catch all the fish for your museum, the size of the fish is reflected by the shadow in the water. So if you know that you're searching for something small like a clownfish in the ocean, then you know not to waste your time on the larger shadows. Did you know that you can hold A to sneak attack on the bugs? 
Holding A while you have the bug net in your hand will allow you to sneak up on various bugs and they won't run away as easily. Be sure to walk the beaches at least two times a day. You'll start to notice the little message bottles on the beach and they have a DIY inside and you should be able to get them two times a day, one in the morning and one in the evening. Once you've progressed a little more in the game, you can actually visit the villagers in their houses and they will sometimes be crafting things on their DIY workbench. And if you speak to them while they're crafting, they will give you that particular DIY recipe. There should be a total of three villagers every day that will be crafting something when you visit them in their homes. You can find one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one in the evening. Have you noticed the floating balloons yet? You can hit the balloons and they will contain various things such as bells and iron nuggets, but they will also contain DIY recipes so be sure to hit them with your slingshot. Once you receive your Nook Miles phone and the Nook Miles app from Tom Nook, then keep an eye on it to see what you can do next. Taking a look through the task can keep you on track for paying off your first debt to Tom Nook. A really quick tip that I wish I would have known early on is that you can flick the R stick while you're in the Nook Miles app to quickly switch to the Nook Miles tasks that have been completed. A really easy way to earn Nook Miles every day is to check in with the Resident Services Terminal. You will receive free Nook Miles just for logging in every day. And then once you're far enough along in the game, you'll receive the Nook Miles Plus Rewards Program, and this basically just adds additional daily things that you can do for some additional Nook Miles, so be sure to keep an eye on these and clear them out as frequently as you can so that you can get more tasks to show up. And as you start to complete your Nook Miles tasks, you'll start to notice that you're unlocking nicknames for your passport. You can customize your passport with these nicknames so that others can see it. So, customize to your little heart's content. Shake as many trees as you can daily. Some of the trees will contain a small amount of bells and some will contain items. But be sure to shake the trees with your bug net out in case you run into the wasp. If you time it just right, you can grab them, or you can also run into the nearest tent to get away. Now have you noticed that you only started with a single type of island fruit? Check your mailbox frequently for gifts from mom because sometimes she will send a non-native fruit. You can plant this fruit and grow a tree. You can also get non-native island fruit from the mystery island tree. However, this is not a guaranteed way and probably one of the best ways to get other types of fruit on your island is by visiting other players' islands and trading for them. Now speaking of fruit, if you eat the fruit, it gives you extra strength. Once you eat a fruit, you can use your shovel to dig up an entire tree, or you can break rocks with one hit. So keep that in mind so you don't accidentally break your rocks if they're in locations that you want to keep them in. Now speaking of rocks, if you dig three holes behind you when you're gathering resources from them, it will keep you from bouncing back too far and allow you to get the total of eight hits on the rock. This allows you to get the maximum resources from each stone. Now eventually you'll start to get into planting flowers on your island to increase your star rating, but there's a little more to it than that. You can actually breed hybrid flowers by combining special color variations and by putting them in certain patterns. I've actually got another video on that, so if you're interested, then be sure to check the description below for the video link. Starting out, you'll receive a flimsy axe for chopping wood. Eventually, you'll get a metal axe, which can actually chop the tree down. However, you may want to keep the flimsy axe around if you're wanting to gather wood, since it won't chop the tree down. It'll also save your metal axe from being broken while you farm for wood. Once you start to make friends within the game, you can visit their islands for cataloging various items. What that means is that if they have a kitchen table that you want, for example, then you can travel to their island, pick it up, and then immediately drop it back down. Once you get back to your island, you can check your resident services terminal, check for the Nook Miles shopping area, and you'll be able to purchase this item for your own island. Now, there's a ton of other fun things that you can do in multiplayer, such as shopping at the other islands for furniture at Nook's Cranny, or you can tour the island to get some island design inspiration. But I won't spoil it, and I'll just leave it at that. There are a lot of great smartphone apps that can help you with your game. These are third-party individual apps that will help you keep track of your bugs and fish and your sea creatures and a lot more. One app that I really like is called ACNH Exchange and it's available for Apple and Android phones. I use this app frequently when I'm trading turnips. Now, Nintendo does have their own online app and it's actually very useful for talking with people in the game. If you have the Nintendo Online Membership, 
Download this app and you can use it on your smartphone to text people while you're in the game. Now once you get the Able Sister shop, you'll find certain patterns that you like online and you can actually get those patterns by typing in the creator code at the Able Sister shop terminal. So for example, if you find a pattern for a shirt or perhaps there's a cool pathway pattern that you like, then you can get the creator code and download it from there. And another super popular online trading resource is called Nookazon, and it's basically Amazon for Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've actually got a video on how you can trade villagers with Nookazon, and I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. As you progress through the game, you'll start to notice that there'll be a new visitor on your island every day. Some will be selling flooring and wallpaper, and some will be selling clothing and accessories. Just keep in mind that you'll have to progress a little bit through the game before this starts. If you happen to see a shooting star, then look up and press the A button to make a wish. The next day, you'll notice star fragments on your beach. Pick these up and you can craft special DIY recipes with them, or you can use them as decoration. Now eventually as you progress through the game, you'll unlock the upgraded resident services building, and Isabel will arrive. Soon after that, the island star rating system will be available, and you'll have to get a 3 star island rating to progress through the game. You can increase your star rating by removing weeds, building bridges and inclines, and placing DIY furniture throughout your island. If you'd like some more detailed help on that topic, I've got a full video on that and I'll put a link in the description of this video. Now something to keep in mind is that you won't unlock terraforming until you get a 3 star island rating, and once you unlock the ability to terraform, you can make waterfalls, ponds, and even build up your land. So now that you're a pro, don't forget to check out the next video that'll show you how to get a 3 star island rating. Or check out the other video that shows you how to get rid of villagers. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Oh, uh, you're still here? This is awkward.